Alright, so back when I covered speedrunners, a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, really were asking about the French battleships. And for the most part, you are all right. However, these girls work a bit differently with it, and that's why I felt it would be best to put them in their own fleet. So this is what led to the fleet rigged from the start. As per usual with these videos, these fleets that I cover on this series may not be what a whole lot of people consider meta. Some of them can be pretty solid in game, while others may be more gimmicky and not as effective. These fleets may be designed to give a twist or some fun to the usual everyday grind. These fleets may also be heavily reliant on manual play, which may be a deal breaker for you auto players out there. However, at the end of the day, it'll be up to you whether you'd like to try this fleet out or not. Anyway, unlike the last few fleets we've talked about here, this one actually does work with both sides of the fleet itself. For a fleet that has a setup like this one does, let's just say that for the enemies, this seems... <sighs> you know what, there's a person that says this much better than I do, so I'll go ahead and let him do it this time. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 carat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Anyway, as you might have guessed it already, the fleet comp is based on ships having preemptive attacks. Now, ever since the introduction of the French ship girls, we've had several characters that can fulfill this role. For th my particular version of the fleet, I'll be working with Jean Bart, Richelieu, and Perseus. Now, Jean Bart and Richelieu both work the same way. They trade a main gun mount for having a preload. Most may consider the damage loss of the third main gun mount as a nasty downside, but having the ability to act first can be a major advantage if you play your cards right. Nonetheless, it's this trait they both share that is the main reason they are both in this fleet. So let's look at our flagship, Richelieu, as she has some decent skills to work with. Now her first skill is a yellow skill called the Iris's Flag Bearer, which is a skill that only works when she's set as the flagship. As the flagship, she grants any Iris Libre and Vichyat Dominion ships up to 15% more firepower, torpedo, accuracy, and reload. She also grants the ability for your Iris ships to do up to an additional 6% more damage and lets your Vichyat Dominion ships take 6% less damage as well. We may not have a lot of Iris Libre here, but she'll definitely be able to help John Barr out a little. Her second skill is called the Iris's Holy Flame which gives her up to a 75% chance to fire a special barrage when firing her main gun. Now, the damage is based on its level, and does also come with a 70% chance to ignite enemies with a special burn. While it's not a major component of this fleet, this barrage will result in some pretty decent damage, especially if you can trigger the burn as well. Lastly, her final skill is Irish's Vindication, which increases the main gun damage of Richelieu if she's equipped with an HE main gun. The last bit of this skill requires a bit of manual play, and will give the player a guaranteed crit salvo if the shot is aimed manually. Now, this will only apply to the first salvo for her in the entire fight, so make the most of that particular shot. Richelieu carries a strong skill set that works to buff her fellow faction teammates and herself. However, she'll only be buffing Jean Bar and herself on this particular instance, so those supports sadly won't be as utilized as they could be. Now Jean Bar, on the other hand, is a lot more focused on buffing herself. Her first skill, Pirate's Soul, focuses on buffing herself by first increasing the damage of the first shot of her volleys by 60%. On top of that, she also increases her manual aiming bonus to 60% instead of the usual 20%. The sheer damage bonus she gets are pretty strong, so she'll get some pretty solid damage output with that particular side of it. Jean's last skill is Final Shot, which boosts her crit rate and crit damage by up to 30% and 50% respectively. This requires that she is equipped with the quadruple 380mm main gun for this to take effect. Now granted she already has a damage boost from her first skill, and now this skill only further shows how she can really hit like a truck if everything works out for her. Now last but not least is Perseus. I originally considered Dunkirk, but felt like I should be bringing in a carrier, and even a healer, that would help out a lot. This would make it more of a mob fleet, since Perseus does bring some pretty solid healing with her skills. However, what makes her interesting is her blue skill, Mercury's Talaria, which slows down her loading time of her airstrikes, but gives her two preloaded airstrikes from the get-go. She will also heal the vanguard for up to 7%, and the main fleet for up to 3.5% of their respective health 
With this skill, she's also able to attack from the get-go of the fight as well. Now, her red skill is Athena's Catapult, which gives her a random airstrike that releases every 12 seconds. These airstrikes will either be Sea Hornets, TBF Avengers, or Fireflies, and their damage will be based on the skill's level. This is a nice skill for some damage, but not a critical part of this fleet's formation. Lastly, her yellow skill, Waters of Sticks, will give her one extra airstrike capacity and allow her to restore all the ships in her fleet for 1% of their HP every 20 seconds. She will also heal the vanguard of the other sorting fleet for 3% of their HP after 20 seconds of them fighting. Extra healing is nice, as that will contribute to better survivability for the fleet as a whole. Now, there are some minor adjustments you can make for this fleet. One quick one could be that if you don't have Richelieu or Jean Bar, you could utilize Dunkirk or even PR3's Champagne. The recently added Aquila can also work in place of Perseus as a damage dealer, as long as she has a dive bomber equipped. Either way, you do have some options to work with if you don't have the particular characters I'm using. Now, granted, I don't think it'll take much to really figure out how the Vanguard is. With the whole gimmick of the fleet centered around preloaded capabilities, what better option exists besides using the infamous torpedo memes from the Sakura Empire? For this particular Vanguard, I'm working with Noshiro, Ayanami, and Ibuki. Granted, there are a lot of different ship girls in the Sakura Empire that can easily work with the Sakura torpedo memes, but I don't have a lot of them leveled. So you're more than welcome to substitute your own variation of this. Anyway, let's take the time to look into the Vanguard that I'm using, starting off with Noshiro. This adorable cinnamon roll actually just recently had a rerun event with her in it, and she's definitely a ship worth leveling for sure. Decent stat line, along with some solid skills, gives her a leg up in the Sakura Torpedo roster. But let's look into her skill specifically. Noshiro's first skill is a blue one called Noshiro's Horfrost, which buffs Noshiro's evasion rate by up to 15% and decreases the torpedo damage of your vanguard by up to 20%. Now, this skill is a great survival and damage control skill, but it definitely isn't the main focus of our setup here. On the other hand, this skill also gives a pretty good reason to have Noshiro as a front tank vanguard in some cases. This mostly depends on the remaining members of your vanguard, though. Noshiro's other skill is a yellow one called Sky Slayer's Edge, which increases the damage Noshiro does to carriers by up to 20%. This skill also improves the torpedo of the entire vanguard by up to 20%, and increases their crit rate by up to 12% as well. This skill will further boost the damage output for your vanguard and their preloads. Thanks to this, the vanguard will be able to dish out some serious damage as well. With that said, let's move on to our well-known torpedo demon, Ayanami. Now, we'll be discussing her retrofitted form here, so she will have two skills that she's working with. The first of the two is the main skill called the Demon, which gives her a 5% chance when firing her guns to increase her torpedo by up to 60% for 12 seconds. This will help her do more damage overall. It'll help her when it procs. Now her other skill is Demon Dance, which gives her up to a 70% chance every 20 seconds to fire a special barrage and increase her evasion by 30% for 5 seconds. The barrage does a decent amount of damage considering it also has some torpedoes involved in it, and it will also help her survive a lot better as well. In the end, it's a pretty decent skill to have. Last, but definitely not least, is the Humble Ibiki. I could say more, but I already know how you'd all react to that. Uh, anyway, Ibiki does her best to focus on something that heavy cruisers generally aren't known for, and that's her torpedoes. However, her unique focus on it and having two preloads allows her to have some say in this fleet formation. Ibiki's first skill is Body and Soul, which increases her torpedo crit rate by up to 40% as well as her own crit damage by 65%. There is a Faith Sim variant that also increases her evasion by up to 12% when firing her torpedoes as well. The crit bonuses will drastically improve the damage output of her torpedoes, and the extra evasion can help her to stay alive during the fight. Definitely a nice skill to have. Her second skill is Flash of Lightning, which gives her a 30% chance to unleash a special barrage when firing her torpedoes. The damage is based on the skill's level as well. Definitely can't complain about the extra damage, especially when you consider her having two preloads right off the bat. Finally, she does have a Siren Killer skill, which does allow her to do more damage to Sirens, but this is limited to specifically them and no one else. So this will do well in events and other Siren bosses, but that's really about it. 
Now, this Vanguard focuses heavily on torpedoes and their preloads, enabling them to do damage up front. This means that any heavy armor foes will suffer severely from this particular Vanguard setup. Granted, as I said before, there are alternatives to this setup, like Naganami, Jinsu, and the many other DDs of the Sakura Empire. So with this whole team together, everyone, literally everyone, can deal solid damage right from the get-go, and this can make fights, well... <laughs> if you ever wanted to know what it feels like to steamroll enemies, this team will easily show you how quickly battles can end. Now, granted not every fight will end quickly and may still take a little bit of time, but this team definitely reduces the average fight time down with just what they can all do together. The fleet will definitely be a force to reckon with. On top of having a solid damage output, the survivability of the team is decent with the evasion boosts in the vanguard and the healing from Perseus. Now, you would think that a fleet as destructive as this might be able to last up to endgame. Technically they can, but it's not going to be a one-sided fight for sure. Now I've only really seen this team for a boss fleet, and even then they still struggle a bit. So it's doable, just going to take a bit of effort. Now, Chapter 13 is a map that definitely punishes those with poor anti-air capabilities. An IJN Vanguard with some French backliners and a light carrier sadly won't be able to handle the anti-air that well. Now, you can get around this with really, really strong and leveled gear, and even then, it still won't be that easy. Actually, now that I think about it, San Diego also has a preloaded torpedo, so you could actually bring her without breaking the fleet's gimmick. A anyway, anyway. Regardless, it'll still require max level ships and gear for those that will be willing to attempt a Chapter 13 with this team. Outside of that, it hasn't really been that difficult for them to crush any enemy fleet. A few more things to also note here. If you do use this team as a boss fleet, Perseus really isn't going to be someone you'd want to use for that. You may need to bring someone with more damage output like Champagne. Another thing is that this fleet is also a manual fleet, but you can use it on auto, just realize that you're denying yourself a few buffs from Jean Bar and Richelieu at the same time. So if manual play isn't your thing, you might not enjoy this fleet as much. On another note, the sheer oil cost of this will make you use so much oil that the US will actually attempt to conquer you. Concerning that this hasn't happened to me yet, I'm guessing I haven't used enough. Now, as for PvP, uh, well, it, it kinda works. I mean, IJN Torpedo Vanguards are still present in PvP, so the Vanguard won't feel out of place. There's a good chance they'll nuke the opponent's Vanguard very quickly right off the bat as well, bringing the fight a bit closer than their backline may appreciate it. Just remember they are still terrible with planned attacks, so carriers can still devastate them in the right situations. As for the backline, it's a bit questionable with the carrier we work. Sure, they'll immediately fire into the fight, which can help clean up the enemy's vanguard, but if they're running full carriers, Perseus will have to reveal them quickly, which even then won't work that well because both Jean Bar and Richelieu are already firing by the time she's released her planes. Now, granted, you'll rack up some wins, but don't be surprised when you run into the meta. There's a reason that backline is the meta in the first place. I guess one more hilarious situation you might have is that a good number of the torpedoes miss the vanguard completely and accidentally wreck an unfortunate backliner that just happened to be lined up perfectly with them. Anyway, whether you use this fleet or not is entirely up to you. Even then, you could use a slight variation of this fleet if you have not yet. Regardless, hope you have fun experimenting with this fleet formation. Now that'll be all for this fleet video, hope you enjoyed it and that it'll help you in your future endeavors. I'll be releasing more of these over time, so look forward to the next video when it comes out. Whether you're a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again real soon.